Hi, everyone. I'm Yekem Yataru. Thanks so much for inviting me to speak at your event. I heard about Creed Aberdeen from Olua Sheon. So a huge thank you for inviting me today. I can also see that you've got an amazing lineup of speakers, um, most of who I, I know. So I know that you are in for a treat today. So just a little bit of background. I moved to Aberdeen about 18 years ago. And I came with my husband. We had been married for about a year and a half at the time. I'd finished a master's degree in petroleum engineering before I came. And my first job was at Total in the reservoir engineering team. So, you know, coming into Aberdeen with you know, an education, but not knowing whether that would be applicable or whether I needed a UK degree to actually get the sort of jobs that I, I wanted to get was a little bit of a, a concern. So I suppose when I go back to the theme of your event today, looking at immigrants and how we can thrive in the UK, I think one of the first lessons I learned when I moved to Aberdeen was not to believe everything I hear, okay? So when I moved, to Aberdeen, one of the first things I was told is that because I didn't have a UK degree, that I wouldn't be able to work as an engineer. Okay, and I heard this from other Nigerians, right? Um, that that was not something I was going to be able to do, and I was actively encouraged to look for jobs in care homes. Now, having a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in engineering, I just, I just didn't accept that, and. And that's one of the first things I want to say to you today is don't accept everything you hear, you know, always be expectant, always be passionate and always stand ready for those opportunities. So the first thing I did was to just, you know, carry my knapsack. It had my CV in it and I walked along Union Street, putting my CV into every recruitment agency that I came across. I just refused to accept that. I, the only place I could work was a, was a care home. And that was in you know, 2004, December 2004. So I wanna encourage you to have that confidence to go for you know, what is yours. Today, I'm doing a whole lot of different things. So my journey from Total, you know, led me to work for companies like Slumberger and I worked for GE. And I also got you know, a couple of other degrees to help me take on the sort of roles that I wanted. So I wanted to move away from technical roles and more into commercial roles. So I went on and, and did a degree. So my second point is that if you are not in a role or position that you feel passionate about, please go ahead and upskill yourself. And upskilling yourself doesn't necessarily mean going back and getting a degree. Um, I have an affinity for, for education and university, but it's not the only way. You know, take on volunteer roles that allow you get that experience. Look for a mentor, somebody that you, you, you look up to, somebody who is maybe doing the sort of things that you want to be able to do and learn from them. You know, do online courses. There's so many free online courses that you can easily get on and upskill yourself and do something that will move you closer to maybe some of those roles that you want to take on. So be willing to invest in yourself. One of the challenges that I came across in general was people had a certain stereotype about what a Nigerian you know, is and, and how they behave and what to expect from them. And some of you listening to this may be in a similar position or you have been in the past. Um, you know, just the general assumption that, you know, we are not maybe as well educated. Um, they may be not expecting us to be 100% honest. They're maybe expecting us to be late for things, things like that. And it's not completely wrong, um, depending on, I guess, you know, your background, where you come from, you know, some of us are that way, but in every culture and country, you have people that, uh, you know, are a certain way. And that's what we call stereotyping. And all of us have different bias. If you really are honest with yourself, you will have some preconceptions, right? And if you, if you sit down and think about, oh, you know, what comes to your mind when you hear Russian man? What are some of the attributes you're expecting him to have? Or somebody from Peterhead, you know, here in Aberdeenshire, what are you expecting from them? We all have these biases, which we need to, we need to really uh, break down. And so I came across some of those stereotypes and biases that people had. 
And I put a lot of pressure on myself to break those. Okay, so being particularly early for things um, so that people can see that you, yeah, I'm not a late person. I don't come late for things. I'm going out of my way to make commitments that I had made, you know, even when it was really inconvenient and, you know, was actually not what not possible, I would, um, in some cases, put myself at risk just to be able to, um, you know, do the things that I said I was going to do. Now, I think that that's something that can play a big role is when people have this conception that you're going to be a certain way. And it can be frustrating because often you may not be given an opportunity to prove yourself and to prove that you, you, know, you are passionate and you are committed to what you're doing. So my encouragement with this third point is to continue to do a good job, even when it looks like people are not noticing or um, people are not acknowledging or they have certain preconceptions and it feels like those conceptions are not going to change. Continue to do a good job because we know that at the end of the day, you know, hard work pays off and it's indiscriminate. So what I mean is regardless of who you are, hard work earns you respect. And I've definitely seen that in my career, just working away, doing what I'm passionate about, navigating through different career changes and just, you know, trying to act with integrity in everything I've done has accumulated in a certain amount of influence and a certain amount of credibility. It wasn't on purpose. It was just you know, making sure that I'm always a person of good character as much as I can be. And that really adds up and gives you the credibility so that what happens in the end is other people are talking about your character and those preconceptions do change because like I said, hard work is something that everybody respects. I think the, the final point I really want to make is around taking opportunities. And, and that's something that I've done and in, in particular in the last six years, is not being afraid to take opportunities. So for instance, I, I knew a few years ago that I would really like an opportunity to join a board and to be a board member and be you know, one of those people that is helping to drive strategic decisions in, in companies. And I didn't mind whether it was a charity or for profit, I just wanted something board level to add to my experience and ultimately to my credentials and my CV. And so I saw, I think it was on LinkedIn, um, an ad for a board member to join an organization called Interface. Now Interface is like a matchmaker between Scottish universities and Scottish companies that are looking to drive innovation within their companies, but maybe don't have the technical um, skill set within their organizations, or they want to test out an idea before they roll it out. So I saw this ad and, you know, I mean, it was not something I'd had experience doing before. I hadn't been on a board in, in that way. I'd been a trustee, um, you know, in my church, I'd been a trustee for four years, which was a bit similar, but this was, this was slightly different. I didn't, like I said, have the experience of being a board in, in an organization like that. But I went ahead and applied. I felt like I was bringing some interesting skills to the table. I had a technical background in engineering. I now had some kind of marketing and commercial skills as well. And I knew, I knew that that board was gonna be full of Scottish people and, and it was gonna be full actually of academics in, in particular. And that I knew I was gonna be different within that board. And it, you know, it concerned me a little bit. I thought, oh, I, I hope they listen to my voice. You know, I hope that I can really contribute. So I, I went ahead and I applied uh, for the role and, and I was called for an interview. Okay, and, and I went to Edinburgh and I met with the, the, the chair, the chair of the board. And in fact, at the moment that the chair, she is the vice chancellor of Edinburgh Napier University. And, and that was around four years ago. And I, and I eventually, I got that role on the board. And, and it's just an opportunity that I wouldn't have taken, say, 10 years ago. I wouldn't have had the guts or courage to apply for that sort of role. But I was already at this point where I was feeling like, look, if you don't take these opportunities, they're not going to be handed to you. No one's going to say, oh, you know, we've noticed you sitting quietly waiting. Here's an opportunity. You need to take them and you need to take them with confidence, but with respect as well. And, and I suppose, you know, just to close out, I want to encourage you to be confident. And confidence is different from being 
you know, being rude or being arrogant, where you put confidence next to respect, what you get is an opportunity to really influence, but without respect, it becomes, it becomes arrogance. So when you're taking these opportunities, be confident in your ability to, to do the job, but also be open and respectful to the fact that other people are going to have a different view, that other people are going to have hangups, actually, that are not your problem, but you do have to accommodate them in that scenario, because people want to feel like they can work with you, they want to feel like they can change your mind on different points so if you come across kind of all all set you know and not looking like you can waver or that you're you're quite difficult to work with it doesn't matter how smart you are people are not going to be keen to to be around you it's just it's just the way it is so often when i hear confidence being talked about i think sometimes it can be mistaken for being brash or for being arrogant um, and yeah, sometimes when you're confident, some people will, will think that you are being arrogant, but I wouldn't let that put you off as long as you know that you're doing it with respect. Don't ever deem your light just so that somebody else can feel better about themselves. Always put your best foot forward. I hope that's helpful and apologies for not being able to be there physically with you today. I have another engagement, unfortunately, but I'm delighted to be able to speak to you and to share this message with you. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now.